Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So these were all the methods of natural vegetative propagation where we saw the leaves, roots and stems, they exist, that is how they exist in nature. We do not do any modification, whether you talk about the potato or the onion or the bryophyllum, we are not making any changes to it. So whatever it is that is present in them by itself and they give rise to new plants with similar characteristics as their parents. So we really do not have any control on which type of plants will get produced. But when we talk about artificial vegetative propagation, here we have certain methods like cutting, layering, grafting and with these methods we have our own control. So if we want certain characteristics in a new plant, so we can do that. So let's say if I want a plant, so I'm just giving you a rough example. Let's say that you want a plant, a rose plant, where the roses should be uh, half yellow and partially red in color. So if, if that's what you want. So by natural vegetative propagation, that is not possible because this is something which you wish. But natural vegetative propagation happens by itself. So it is not under your control. But with artificial vegetative propagation, you can actually do this. You can actually take some part of a red rose plant and some part of a yellow rose plant and then you can mix and match them to form a new plant which will give rise to rose, roses which are partially yellow and partially red in color. So that is artificial vegetative propagation. That is, it, it is completely under our control and we can get desired characteristics of the new plant. So now we will spend some time understanding each of the methods under artificial vegetative propagation. In fact, these days, this process of artificial vegetative propagation is utilized to a very large extent. In fact, it is to some extent exploited by farmers and gardeners for commercial propagation of plants. That is, they want to produce more uh, red roses plants because maybe red roses, it is more beneficial or they earn more profit by selling red roses. So what they do, they use this method of artificial vegetative propagation to increase the production of red roses. So to, to some extent it helps them and to some extent they sometimes exploit it, exploit this entire process. So let us look at the first artificial vegetative propagation process that is cutting. So what can we do with cutting? So here a plant part is cut from the parent and put into the soil which later give rise to a new plant. So have you ever seen that uh, in, if you have a small garden in your house, you would have seen that you and your neighbors, if you like a plant which is there in your neighbor's house, what do you do? Sometimes you just take a stem of that plant, a stem with a branch or something, and then you come back to your home and you put it into the soil. And then over a period of time, it gives rise to a new plant. So basically, what did you do? You just took one part of that plant from your neighbor's garden and then you have put it in your house and you got a new plant. So basically, you, have, you help the plant to reproduce. A new plant was formed with the help of one plant part from the parent. So this is called cutting. So we, because you are actually cutting one part and that part is capable of giving rise to new plant. So let us look at examples. The most common example of stem cutting happens in rows. So if you want to have a new rose plant, all you need is a stem, a stem with some leaves and then you put it into the soil and over a period of time you get a new plant. The similar thing is true for sugarcane as well. So there are certain plants where root cutting helps. Now, not the stems of all plants are not capable of giving rise to a new plant. So in some plants, that capability is with the roots. For example, dahlia. In case of dahlia plant, dahlia is a kind of flower which is like quite big in size. And then roughly, this is how it looks. It is also available in many different colors. So in case of these plants, if you take, if you cut a stem of this plant and and then put it in your house, I think I don't think you'll get a new plant because the stems of these plants are not capable of giving rise to the entire plant, but the roots are. So in case of Dahlia, you have these kind of roots. We have spoken about the roots, right? The, these roots are also modified roots and they help in food storage. 
you remember while we were talking about natural vegetative propagation we said that that can happen with the help of roots so dahlia was one such example of natural vegetative propagation by roots so these roots such roots are small and thick fleshy and help in food storage and they are capable of bearing buds so they can give rise to new plants so in this case we have to cut the root of the plant and then put it into the soil over a period of time the buds will develop and buds will give rise to new plants thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again